What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Here we go again. Another breakdown coming at you guys. All right, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Eric. I'm on a mission to make sure this MCAS is as easy as possible for you guys because I know what it's like to be a pre-med. All right, you got a lot going on and this MCAS shouldn't be this huge, impossible beast that you have to conquer, you know, in order to get to med school. Okay, it should be easy. The MCAT is easy when you're doing the right things. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys how to break this down, how to pick the best answer, how to make all these details, you know, make sense, all this stuff. Okay. This is my first time seeing this. I do these live for you guys. Notice that there are no edits in these videos at all. So as always, guys, do it on your own first and then hear me break it down. Okay. So go through this passage first, read through it. All right. Pause it whenever you need to. Okay. And pick your answer. So this is the first question. Next question. Next question. Next question here. Okay, so pick your answers and then resume this video. All right, I'm breaking down right now. Passage two. All right. Every year, there are more than 1 million cases of invasive cancer in the United States, with 582,000 deaths and 14,000 cases in patients younger than 20 years old. Wow. Okay. At its core, cancer is essentially the failure of tissue growth regulation. All right. I knew that. I'm not highlighting anything yet because I know all this stuff. Okay. I know what, how cancer is the failure of tissue growth regulation. And these numbers, I don't really need to know. I don't need to memorize these numbers, okay? In order to maintain healthy and regular tissue function, it is necessary for genes called oncogenes, all right, to promote cell growth and reproduction. Another class of genes called tumor suppressor genes inhibits cell survival and division, okay? I know this already from my content review. I know that tumor suppressor genes are going to inhibit cell survival and division, but I'm going to highlight it just to make a mental reminder in my head. All right, just so I could confirm the fact that these are the ones that inhibit cell survival and division. Remember, whatever they tell you in the passage is true and you go with it. Okay, you go with it, whatever they tell you in the passage. These two families of genes are designed to work in harmony, cycling cells within tissues through stages of division and death. All right, so far, first paragraph, we, it's, it's all content review. I know all this stuff already. Okay, so I'm sure they're going to throw some stuff at us to make us trip up a little bit. All right, we'll see. A family of serine slash threonine protein kinases called aurora kinases. Okay, I'm going to highlight this to make a mental note. So what are aurora kinases? They are serine slash threonine kinases. Okay, plays a crucial role in mitosis progression, including centrosome duplication, chromosome condensation, and cytokinesis completion. Okay, so if I had a... I have a notebook with me, so I'm going to write it down real quick. So if I had like a the bad paper they give you, they give you some type of like marker and dry erase paper, which sucks bad on the MCAT. But if I had it in front of me, I would write this. I would write Aurora kinase equals promote mitosis. Okay, just that quick note there, just like that. All right. Aurora kinases promote mitosis progression. Cool. Aurora C has also been shown to involve in spermatogenesis and oogenesis. Okay. Overexpression of auroras A and B has been observed in many cancers. All right. This is what causes cancer, overexpression of aurora A and B. All right. So in the paper, I would write too much aura A, B equal cancer. Those are my notes. Boom. Just like that. All right. Just to make a mental note in my head. Has been observed in many cancers, including colon and breast cancer, and developing powerful aurora kinase inhibitors has become a priority for oncology researchers. All right. As I'm reading this paragraph, it all makes sense in my head. All right. Of course, we're going to want to inhibit some aurora activity to stop the overexpression, to stop the cancer development. Okay. So let's see what happens. This is pretty cool. It's pretty interesting stuff here. This is why I like the BB section a lot. It's pretty. It's pretty interesting, guys. All right. Scientists have been investigating a new hydrosoluble multi-kinase inhibitor, C5M, which has shown promise as an efficient inhibitor of the division of cells from a multi multiplicity of origins. These researchers first examined the IC50 of C5M in a number of cancers. All right, IC50. They 
you guys should be familiar with what IC50 is. Okay. Oh, they actually tell it right here. So that's pretty good too. All right. The IC50 or half maximal inhibitory concentration is a concentration of drug that is required for 50% in vitro inhibition of a specific biologic or biochemical function. All right. So this is what IC50 is. All right. You should also be familiar with this. You should commit this to memory. Okay. IC50 is the amount of drug needed to inhibit 50% of its target. Okay, so write it down like that. So what this means is that when you see IC50, a lower IC50 means a more effective drug, and a higher IC50 means that the drug is not as effective. Okay, lower IC50 is good. The lower the IC50 can be, the better. And they give us table one here. Don't look at it, only look at it when the question asks you for it. To investigate differential efficiencies across cell lines, the scientists compared C5M treatment in genetically modified HCT116 cells. Results are shown in figure one. Cool. All right, and this percent of inhibition here. Easy. Easy, 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 guys. Who said the MCAS hard? Who? They're lying to you. Okay, let's go to the questions here. It is most likely that the difference in percent inhibition is significant between all right, and these are involved in the last figure here. So they're looking for a significant difference. Okay. That's pretty easy. So HCT116, CHK2+, plus and minus CHK2-. minus. So they're talking about this one and this one. There's a little difference here. Okay. 2 plus and P53 minus. So P53 knockout. Let's see. Here, here, that is a big difference. Okay, that's pretty significant, so I like this answer. CHK2 minus and P53 plus. Eh. There's a difference, but not as big as from here to here. And then CHK2 plus to P53 plus. Yeah, there's a difference. Again, actually not, not really a difference, because these error bars are kind of overlapping. This overlaps with the result here, so there's not much significant difference here. So obviously, this is going to be the best answer. That one is pretty easy. Let's keep going, guys. Suppose that an unusually high degree of aurora kinase activity is observed in the cervix. All right, remember, high activity, that could be cancer. What could we reasonably conclude about C5M treatment efficacy across all cervical cancer cell lines using this new information and data within the passage? All right, so they told us here the cell lines... All right, we see HeLa, cervix carcinoma. So a cell line HeLa, the HeLa cell line, when it has carcinomas in the cervix, we're inhibiting the HeLa cell line, and we see that IC50 is pretty low. It's the lowest out of everything here. So it's pretty efficient at targeting the HeLa cell line carcinoma. All right, and that's, we're talking about cervix here, that's it, right? Yeah, cervical, cervix, okay. Let's see. C5M will significantly inhibit mitotic progression. Okay, yeah. In cancerous cervical cells. Ooh, wait a second. Wait a second, guys. All right, this is very important. This is a trap right here. All right. Whenever, write this down, guys. Whenever there are strong conclusions, okay, about an experiment or about the passage, about anything, a strong conclusion requires strong evidence, very, very strong evidence. And because the MCAT passages, they don't got time to be throwing all these strong evidences at you. They don't got time for that. Usually these very extreme, strong conclusion answers, they're wrong. They're wrong, okay? This is good, I like it, until they told me in cancerous cervical cells. They're telling me that in all types of cervical cancer, the C5M, will do its job. It'll inhibit all of them. All types of cancer cells in the cervix. They're telling me C5M will take care of everything. That is a huge conclusion. Huge. All right. The table only gives us information about HeLa cell lines. What if we have other types of cell lines in cervical cancer? <laughs> you know how many different types of cells there are? Okay. So A is wrong. Do not fall for that trap, guys. 
It's very extreme. It's extreme. C5M will significantly inhibit mitotic progression in cancerous cervical cells, but only if P53 gene expression is knocked out. Um, again, very, 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 very strong conclusion here. Okay. Also, I think that in, yeah, look, if you don't even have P53, then the inhibition is lower anyways. Okay. So this is wrong. This is telling me that P53, this is telling me that inhibition is amazing when P53 is knocked out, which is wrong because inhibition sucks. Look, it's only like at 25, 30 when P53 is knocked out. All right, but this also involves very strong conclusions, so we don't like that. C5M will not significantly inhibit mitotic progression in cancerous cervical cells. Um, it did a good job for HeLa. It did a good job for HeLa, but we don't know about the other cell lines so it did it worked for hela so you can't really make this conclusion all right and then what's d here insufficient information is available to make conclusions about c5m treatment efficacy that is the correct answer okay process elimination this is the correct answer okay d is the correct answer these are very very uh strong and this one is just wrong there's evidence to provide that this is wrong in the table. Okay, so D is the right answer, guys. Write down what I said before. Trust me, guys, that will save you and bring you up a lot of points. Given the mechanism of C5M action, what is the most likely reason that C5M concentrations greater than 2 micromolarity were not used by the scientists for this experiment? Okay, I don't even have to look at the answers, and I can kind of formulate an answer in my head. Okay. C5M inhibits the aurora kinase, okay? And if I have too much C5M, I'm going to inhibit too much aurora kinase. I need aurora kinase to promote mitosis, all right? I wrote it down. I remember when, you, when I quickly wrote it down, I made a mental note in my head and I memorized, all right? Aurora kinase is good, promotes mitosis. Overexpression of aurora kinase, that's bad. We get cancer, all right? So if we're inhibiting too much aurora kinase, we're going to disrupt, you know, we're going to disrupt the mitosis. I mean, we don't want that. C5M is expensive to produce. Okay, we don't, who cares if it's expensive, all right? You guys are researchers. I'm sure you have some type of money here and there, all right? And I have no idea where this research is even taking place. I don't know if they're rich or not. Who knows? Okay. C5M was found to be equally efficacious in all cell lines at the same concentration. This has nothing to do with why they used... <laughs> the two micromolar. Okay, that has nothing to do with that. Also, look, it was efficient in cervix HeLa, but then it wasn't that efficient here. Remember, guys, smaller value for IC50 is better. It's good. Concentrations less than two micromolar act to increase the efficacy of C5M more than higher concentrations. Again, this is a reach. Okay, this is a reach. What is a reach? A reach is like when you're trying to convince yourself that an answer is right when it's really wrong okay we don't do reaches also that it never tells us in the passage or anything like that about how it's stronger if we use less okay they never tell us that and usually when you use more you get a better efficiency all right d it is possible that higher concentration of c5m could disrupt normal cellular division and destroy a healthy neighboring tissue that's what i said before this matches what i said if you already can formulate an answer before looking at the answer choices, odds are what you formulated was probably correct. Why might the researchers have used both Mahalavu and focus cell lines in their IC50 experiments, considering that both are liver cell lines? One cell line is from a healthy liver, while the other is from a cancerous liver. Okay, no, they're both carcinoma. Different cancers may exist within the same tissue and may respond in different ways to possible therapies. Yeah, that's an amazing high level answer there. Okay, why is it amazing? It's because it's true, all right? There's, the human body is so complex and things are very specific to certain things, okay? Like you could have so many different cancers and so many different cell lines and so many different possible inhibitors, all this stuff. Like this requires a lot of research guys. So B is a great answer. One cell line came from a human while the other came from a mouse. <laughs> I'm sure you guys by now can 
can chop that out. Okay, I don't even have to explain that. That was never even mentioned once. Who even who even said mouse here? No one. It was unnecessary. The scientists could have selected only one of the cell lines for use. That is very that's kind of rude. <laughs> why are you why are you bashing the scientists like that? It's kind of rude. Okay. Answer is B. This was not proven at all. D was not even mentioned once, guys. If you just kind of like sit down and look at these answers, you can kind of your your scores will improve. I promise you that. All right. So that was it for this one, guys. Okay, if you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me, go ahead to the comment section below. There's a link. Click on the link. Fill the application out. And if it seems like you're a good fit, then I will invite you to MCAT University, which is a fully loaded program that's definitely going to hit your target score. 100%. Everyone there is hitting their target score. I promise you that. As always, guys, comment down below. Hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next video.